Yeah, I saw that. Let you know there's a railroad track down in this stuff. issued by the community. The stream flows through just like you need a license to go out hunting. In order to obtain that license, you need to take a course at the end of the course, which usually takes about a year. Wow. At the end of the course is an examination. If you pass, then you are issued a hunting <coughs> license. And what do they hunt here, however? What they hunt around here, the fauna in this area is the same as in Germany. Once we get into <coughs> Germany, the same in Austria. Uh, over here they hunt mainly deer, stags, wild boars, pheasants, uh, pheasants, rabbits. That's about it. Uh, we have roaming the woods here, the forests, a lot of lynx. By the way, not the red furred lynx, the bobcat, but our lynx has sort of a grayish white fur with black spots. The lynx is protected, not for hunting. The lynx is protected. We have also in this area grouse, the bird that does not fly. That's also protected, not for hunting. Mainly deer, stags, wild boars, rabbits, pheasants. We have no bears, as you will see later on, we get really into the woods, into the forests. Uh, no bears. The last bear in this area was shot in the year 1852. Uh, in Europe, you find bears, good-sized bear, almost the size, almost the size of a grizzly, in the Scandinavian countries, Sweden, Norway, Finland. And in the southern part of Europe, you find them also big-sized bear uh, in the so-called Carpathian Mountains. The largest part of those mountains is in the country known as Romania, the country right after uh, Hungary, going towards the Black Sea. A small part of the Carpathian Mountains covers the southern part of Poland, uh, and another small part is in the Ukraine. So no more bears in this area. The wolf is slowly, slowly making a comeback after the fall of the Iron Curtain. During Iron Curtain time, they could not migrate back and forth. Uh, Poland already has many, many wolves, so does Belarus, the country after Poland. And then, of course, everybody knows about Russia with tremendous amount of wolves. When we're talking about Russia, the highest bear population altogether is over in Russia and there in particular on the peninsula by the name of Kamchatka. Kamchatka is after Siberia going towards the Japanese Sea and on Kamchatka they have a very big bear, the bear known as the Koryak bear. 
Kamchatka, by the way, also has, is known in the world for its 30 still active volcanoes on the peninsula by the name of Kamchatka. So the wolves slowly moving back into this area. Same story, by the way, is true for the elk, or you call them the moose, some people call them moose. It's a smaller form of the moose that we have over here, as which we call the elk. Once again, talking about hunting, uh, you might know France and Italy hardly has any woods, forests like you will see from now on in the Bohemian Hills. Therefore, in those two countries, there are travel agencies that specialize for with hunting trips into this area. So in autumn, you will hear a lot of French and Italians establish factories, business. KMP, for instance, is a German company making uh, jets for, like, um, uh, tell me, printers, computer printers, and so on. So APTA over here employs, on average, 200 people, a small little village. And uh, on driving through, during our drive, you will realize, you will see that the condition of the houses in this little village are much better than what we have seen so far due to the fact that they found employment in these so-called Western companies that moved into here uh, right after the fall of the Iron Curtain. Here you see the sign, Aptar. Genia is the name of the town here. Aptar, the name of the American company going down that way. You will get to the plant of Aptar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Servus. Uh, ja. Genau, ja. Aha, genau. Aha. This is this is so When you look on the right hand side, you see all these one family homes. Much better condition than what we have seen so far. And what's the name of the no, 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 no. I speak with the Slavic accent good, on top, good, okay, no, therefore yeah. it's not pronounced yeah, like good, a C, good. like, but she, uh, C K N Y E, Skinje, Skinje, C K Y N E. you know once we get to the highest point and from there down it goes towards Passau then. So our estimated time of arrival, Karl Heinz, what's the? Uh, uh, shortly before five o'clock sort of has been revised. We lost time at that little bottleneck there near the mining tower. So about five 
shortly before five, depending on traffic that we encounter from now on. Good luck, Carl. Thank you. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I agree on. <laughs> <laughs> through nowadays in the Czech language known under the name Venperk, V as in Victor, I-M-P-E-R-K. Up till 1945, when this whole area was popu populated by ethnic Germans, until 1945, they used to have in Vimperk, now under the name Vimperk, but until 1945, the name was Winterberg, a German name translated into English meaning winter mountain. Tells you lots of snow in this area here. And in Wimperg, they used to have until 1945 eight printing plants and they printed in 20 different languages exporting all over the world. They were, they were very, very famous for their elaborate editions of the Bible and the Quran. There was one famous printer, his name was Steinbrenner, with one N, not with two Ns, Steinbrenner. Really known in printing all over the world, but with the end of the Second World War in 1945, three million ethnic Germans that had lived here in this area for centuries uh, had to leave overnight, of course, due to the fact what had happened during the 12 years of Nazi times. So they were chased out overnight. They had to leave everything behind into the empty properties were forcibly relocated ethnic German, uh, ethnic Slovaks and ethnic Czechs. They had to move into this area. So three millions of them left here overnight. They, whatever they could put into a suitcase they took along and most of them settled in Bavaria, the one state of the 16 uh, German states that is 
closest bordering onto this area. The famous Herr Steinbrenner, he moved into Austria into a small, beautiful town near Passau. It's about 20 kilometers away from Passau. The name of that town is Scherding. He relocated and started all over again in that town. Nowadays, he's mostly in book binding, not in printing. Now, when I said elaborate prints of the Bible and the Quran, uh, explanation, the covers were either in velvet or in leather studded with precious gems like mother of pearl or with ivory. The edges were always gilted edges, not only simple gilted edges, but in the gilted edges were patterns. In this town here, Wimpeck, that we are passing through right now, is a little castle. In that castle is one room. In that room they show a few editions of the miniature Bibles and Korans that were printed in this town. They always came with magnifying glasses, very curious, but they always supplied magnifying glasses with the miniature editions. Um, if anybody is interested, again go to Google. They show you photographs of what they have on display in the castle up on the hill on the right hand side here. You see it through the deciduous trees and shrubs here. <coughs> so the name again of the town, Wimberg, if anybody's interested, if anybody wants to go to Wikipedia, Google, uh, you might find it even under the name, or I'm sure you find it under the name Winterberg or Wimpack, and even if you just put in Steinbrenner with one N, not with two N, because normally it's written with two Ns, uh, he was the wow. most famous of all the printers in this town. Now, nowadays, in this day and age, there's one small printing plant left, and what they print is like calendars, flyers, brochures, but no Bibles or the Quran, and not in other languages. The town was famous. They exported all, they printed 20 different languages all over the world. Uh, since I mentioned the 12 years of Nazi time, uh, you might know this whole area under another name. If you're a little versed in not so long ago history, the name Sudetenland. This is the Sudetenland that we are passing through right now. Just left Limp Bimp. in the lobby of the Hilton Hotel. There they had on display, of course, also the famous Bohemian glass, Bohemian crystal in Europe. Very, very famous, just like in the States, Tiffany or Steuben glasses, or for that matter, the French Baccarat or Lalique glass, or not to forget the famous Venetian glass, which does not come from the island of Venice, but the island next to it the name of Murano, and some people even call it Murano glass. So Bohemian crystal, Bohemian glass in Europe, very, very famous.
right now uh, people go into the forests, into the woods to collect blueberries. The blueberry bush is a very low bush on the ground. Wild grown blueberries, not raised in a uh, nursery or so, but uh, the bush very low and of course people don't bend down and pick berry by berry. They have a tool tool that resembles strongly a comb, a wooden comb, with far apart teeth and so to speak they comb through the bush to collect the blueberries. The season runs sort of until, from now on, until the end of August and then starts, as you can imagine, with all those forests here, the wonderful 